Before I get started with this video, I have to shout out two people. One, Ashen Lewis for tagging me in this post. And two, uh, Phil over at the African Dis Diaspora Network for actually doing a video about this. Now, I might actually turn the whole Palm Wars into a series as well. Like, I have so many ideas. A lot of people like when I did the first Palm Wars, which was called Rise of the Low IQ. That was just off of a whim. But now I have to definitely call this one Palm Wars Rise of the Incel. And you'll see exactly why I say that. Because according to numerous articles that have been posted on the Internet from logical and legit sources for the last couple of days. And ironically, lamestream media didn't talk about it, but I wouldn't expect them to touch on this. They said that Incels is America's newest domestic terrorism threat i am reading this from an article right now called lawfareblog.com and there are other articles that pretty much say the same exact thing it has gotten to the point where these incels these individuals if you look at the definition right there on your screen those who take who are incapable of finding or having or sustaining romantic relationship with someone else and they take it out on that person and everyone else around them because they can't get any or they can't get anybody to love them. Listen, they say now it's a new domestic terrorism threat. It's gotten to that point. I've done so many videos in the past about these incels. It's not even funny. It really isn't because they take out their anger and frustration or lack of being able to be in a companionship with a woman out on other people that don't deserve it. That's scary. Of course, we all know Elliot Roger. He, I call him the king of the incels because his, what he did was infamous. Then you had that guy who was up in Canada uh, and ran through all those, uh, shot those people that he thought was, having sex and everything like that. Then you had that one who killed that elderly man in New York who was from Baltimore. He said he was going to go up there and kill every black man that he saw in a, a holding hands with a white woman or something to that effect. These incels are insane. And a lot of them are probably your mass shooters. They don't, they can't get a uh, companionship from a woman. So they take it out on everybody else. And most of your incels are, are you guessed it palm colored most men well i i can't i don't know mo i would say most black men if they get rejected by a woman they'll just keep on moving it's life rejection happens but these incels especially the elliot rogers he felt he was so privileged that he thought he could get any woman possible. But he was really threatened was that the women that he wanted did not only not want him but they wanted a black man and that's another thing with the incels. Most of them are racist as hell. They, some of them don't mind not getting the woman they want, but if they lose out to a black man, it's curtains. Elliot Rogers fell right into that category. Now I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to read this article because I'm a bit intrigued on what made them post this article. Shortly after the May 2014 Isla Vista shooting in which a gunman opened fire outside a University of California Santa Barbara sorority house. A chilling video circulated on social media. The attacker, 22 year old former student Elliot Roger, bluntly declared his motivation. If I can't have you girls, he said, I will destroy you. As has now become a fixture of mass shootings, both in the United States and abroad. The gunman emailed his 107,000 word manifesto titled My Twisted World to 34 addresses in order to both presage and publicize the attack. The manifesto, which was widely quoted in news reports, revealed the existence of an aggressive, hateful and rapidly proliferating online community of young men frustrated at their inability to find sexual partners. They call themselves incels a portmanteau for involuntary involuntary celibate the term is derived from a website created by a female undergraduate student at canada's carlton university in 1993 named alana's involuntary celibacy project now how about that the incel terminology was created by a woman but has been widely 
used mainly by men. How about that? Now, that's interesting. That's something I didn't know. I learned something new today. Although it was originally conceived as a site where lonely individuals of both sexes could meet, exchange experiences and provide support, both the concept and its online manifestation were taken over by men complaining about their own involuntary celibacy and debating the causes behind their frustrations. Roger was among those who adopted the incel label. Indeed, he is now considered by fellow incels to be their movement's patron saint. Now you see why I call him the king of the incels. I didn't call him that for nothing. It's a, like it's a major reason why I refer to him as such. That was a title that was earned and rightfully so. Indeed, he oh, I'm sorry, I almost read something twice. A cultural to- touchstone, an inspirational figure to be imitated and emulated. The incel ideology as such rails against Stacy's, the idolized wom- women they desire, but believe denied them sex as well as Chad's. The similarly idolized males who are assailed for quarreling all the apparently best women for themselves. Five years ago, these incels congregated on websites including puhhate.com. PUA stands for pickup artist. Now they trawl Reddit, 8chan, and its replacement, 8kun, and have also created their own forums and moved to the dark web. The incel ideology is real and lethal. In the deadliest incel linked attack to date in April 2018, and is about to talk about the one I was talking about in Canada, 10 pedestrians were killed in a vehicle ramming attack on Toronto's busy Yon Street. Other deadliest attacks that have cited incel ideology or inspiration have occurred at Umpqua Community College in Roseburg, Oregon in October 2015. Aztec High School in Aztec, New Mexico in December 2017, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida in February 2018, and the Tallahassee Hot Yoga Studio in Tallahassee, Florida in November 2019. The death toll in the United States and Canada now stands at nearly 50 people, and incel ideology has spread to Europe, although it has yet to inspire at least directly any deadly attacks. Accordingly, there are reasons to believe that the incel movement and the terrorism threat it poses are both here to stay and a matter to be taken seriously. First, this violence is indisputably terroristic in that it seeks to repress and subjugate women as part of the incel's vision of a paternalistic, genderized society. As J.M. Berger argues, statements issued by incels showcase all the standard components of extremist belief, including an in group, the group to which the extremist belongs, in this case, the sexually deprived incels, and an out group, the group targeted by the extremist group, in the case, Chad's and Stacy's, which translates from incel speak as people with normal sex lives. Berger also disputes the dismissal of incel violence as perpetrated by obviously troubled or mentally ill young men, even in cases where mental health issues are confirmed. Ideology plays a role, and a terrorism label is still applicable. By advocating bloodshed as a mean of broader societal intimidation, incel ideology conforms to the core definition of terrorism as violence designed to have far-reaching psychological effects. Second, the incel movement has benefited from the same social mobilization and online communication tools that have propelled the Islamic state and violent far-right extremists to increasing prominence and attention. With just a Google search, curious outsiders can discover an entire online world populated by incels complete with their own sites, language, and culture. Once their initiates are exposed to a variegated menu of extremist topics propagated by form dwellers eager to radicalize newcomers. Relatedly, the threat posed by incels is growing harder to ascertain because increased law enforcement and media attention has forced the movement into darker and more private online locales. Public forums today, while still unambiguously misogynistic in their rhetoric, now rarely advocate violence as brazenly as they once did. They are relatively effectively self-policed by site administrators. Fringes on the movement have migrated to smaller, less police sites, including Telegram, the encrypted app favored by the Islamic State and other terrorist groups, and Discord, the popular gaming site. Third, the fact that incel violence has come from breakaway loan actors rather than organized groups represents a formidable challenge to law enforcement efforts to interdict and prevent the violence espoused by the ideology's proponents. Like most violent far right and modern jihadist terrorism, incel violence has not been dictated by leaders of an 
of an identifiable network who design, apply, and finance and train the attackers. Without any kind of traditional command and control apparatus, these incel attacks have been conceived by individuals who design and execute their plots alone. In this lone actor model, it becomes nearly impossible for law enforcement agencies to interdict would-be attackers and stop the violence before it occurs, as we have seen with terrorists inspired by the Islamic State. In most cases, the perpetrators leave no traceable footprint online until they post until they post their manifestos or digital attack advertisements. And when they do, they are easily drowned out or overwhelmed by an army of shit posters who enjoy spreading increasingly extreme and often violent rhetoric through their anonymous online profiles, but rarely have any intention of committing attacks in the real world. Fourth, the incel movement should be of grave concern because of its increasing intermingling with violent far-right extremists and their own bedrock talking points of hatred and intolerance. Rogers' manifesto was not only virulently misogynistic, it was also racially charged. Since its publication in 2014, the incel movement has infiltrated by far-right extremists who see so-called men's right activism as a common ground. Male supremacy thus has gone hand in hand hand in glove with white supremacy. As such, the increasing spread of extremist far right views online and the success of far right terrorists in launching major attacks from El Paso to Pittsburgh will likely continue to embolden incels. In addition, like their far right counterparts, some incels may have benefited prior from military service. Indeed, four of the six incel attackers cited here have had some degree of military experience and at least one other incel attack in which only the gunman was killed involved a U.S. Army veteran who opened fire outside a Dallas courthouse. In this respect, even those who left military service prematurely may nonetheless have used the weapons training they received in their attacks. And finally, the incel movement's rise is concerning because of its accessibility. This is not an ideology that requires training in arcane religious doctrine and indoctrination through complex political texts. Instead, it plays off emotions and frustrations experienced daily by young men around the world, and it appeals more effectively to individuals who are simply angry or lonely than to those with pre-existing extremist tendencies. The incel ideology co-ops these feelings of isolation and sexual frustration and then weaponize them into hateful ideology that attacks women, men, and in some instances, minorities and individuals with mental illness. And with its online presence, a catalog of incel chat rooms is only a few clicks away for anyone with an Internet connection compared to Islamism or white supremacy. Inceldom is an ideology that any young men in any community could fall into and become deeply enmeshed. Perhaps the most challenging aspect of the incel movement's mobilization to violence is that there are no obvious legal measures or counterterrorism intelligence initiatives available. The movement is completely decentralized without any hierarchy or any leaders and therefore no targetable offline organizing or funding streams. It is also very difficult to identify and enlist persons with similarly extreme, sorry, extremist views, but who eschew violence to serve as inner locutors, as is done with other programs to counter violent extremism. Although Alana, the Canadian female founder of the early involuntary celibate communities, is trying, domestic law enforcement agencies cannot, of course, legally track online speech or police language. And even so, incels pride themselves on their aforementioned pension for shit posting. Policing social media forms and their content might potentially risk creating new monitoring problems by forcing incels into the darker web, where oversight is more difficult and violent rhetoric can feel more safely propagated. Moreover, the fact that, as Berger notes, many incels themselves claim to be suffering from psychological issues such as a depression or evidence some degree of autism suggests the need for more proactive intervention from therapists and other mental health professionals. But this is more easily said than done as journalist Asia Romano, who has studied the incels, notes. Outreach for incels shouldn't start with enabling the community's violent misogyny or its collective sense of entitlement to the bodies and emotional support of women. It should start with improving men's access to mental health treatment and crucially their faith that it can do them any good. 
alongside the far-right Islamist homegrown violent extremists, incels conform to an increasingly pervasive trend of terrorist attacks perpetrated by individuals without any connection to an existing organization with known leaders in an, un- in an identifiable command and control structure. It is part of a broader rise of domestic terrorism threats and needs to be taken equally seriously by law enforcement and the counterterrorism community before that movement continues to grow in size and threat. So that was a pretty lengthy article that I read there, but I wanted to make sure I read all of it in its entirety so you could get the full scope of what we about this new threat that we are now up against. But yeah, I've done so many videos about these incels over the course of the years since I've been on YouTube and they are batshit crazy. Okay, and like I said, most of your incels as far as I'm concerned, or far as I have seen, have all been palm colored. As a matter of fact, when I was typing in the Google images about incels and they pulling up images, of course, Elliot Rogers picture and that other guy in Canada who ran through those people, their pictures were actually side by side. Like they were literally conjoined. And I think it probably has something to do with what I just read, not necessarily pulled from the same article, but the subject matter was why those two pictures were together. But I knew Elliot Rogers was going to be in it. He's like the go-to person when it comes to this incel topic. He's the most infamous one. But yeah, those incels are definitely crazy. But like I said, if I took anything away from this article was finding out that that term incel was created by a woman, but then it got uh, dominated uh, or taken over by men to the point where I thought men were the ones that created it. But it looks like I was wrong about that. So that's the one thing I did learn today about this particular topic but y'all let me know what y'all think about what it is that i just read like share subscribe make sure to follow me on twitter have your notifications turned on and i will talk to you in the next one